Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. And um, first off, I want to start off by just thanking everyone that uh, has been viewing uh, my talking story episodes where I share stories uh, just from my life. Um, yeah, since I don't really participate in Vlogmas, which a lot of people do, where they vlog every day of the month of December, that's just too much for me to be able to do. So I just figured just sharing those stories with you guys would be something fun. Um, so for those who've been watching it, who enjoy them, who think I'm crazy or whatever, <laughs> thanks so much for um, checking it out. But in this video, I wanted to talk about T-Mobile 5G. Um, this has got to take the cake with um, so many different point of views and so many people either defending T-Mobile, um, kind of like in the middle, and then those people that are downright just bashing T-Mobile. And the reason why I say that there's three different ones is because there are several content creators and also um, those people just immersed in mobile technology that are doing their own investigation and been posting results on Twitter showing what they're getting with uh, T-Mobile 5G. Um, recently, basically T-Mobile flipped the switch, turned it on. People are reporting very bad battery life when it comes to like the 5G capable devices that you can buy from T-Mobile. Besides the battery life being terrible, um, people are definitely reporting, you know, very, very slow speeds. And uh, the other day I checked out uh, Mr. Mobile's video when he went to the Qualcomm Summit on Maui in Hawaii. And um, yeah, I mean, the stuff that they showed looked pretty good. There was even points where they did speed tests and you seen that the speeds like exceeded a thousand megabits per second. That was great. But like they were mentioning, um, based on it, you'd have to stay still and there couldn't be anything obstructing your phone's connection to the, uh, the device node that they had set up at the hotels over there in Hawaii so people can test 5G on the beach. Um, Sometimes they were getting about 100 megabits per second, 200 megabits per second, and then at times when they were very still and they were just right in the perfect spot, line of sight to that node, they were getting like 1,000 megabits per second. So a lot of um, you know content creators such as SMT and them, they're not, they're not basically telling you guys that 5G isn't worth it. They're just trying to have people understand it's not prime time. I use the word prime time because that's that's what we're in when it comes to 4G LTE. If a lot of you guys don't remember back in the day when 4G was coming out, you had Verizon going LTE, AT&T going LTE, and T-Mobile going LTE, and then Sprint went with WiMAX. And it was a cluster mess of, you know, stuff for Sprint because Sprint realized that LTE was a lot better uh, for 4G connectivity than WiMAX was. So they had to kill off WiMAX, they had to then start building out their infrastructure for LTE connectivity. And that's why Sprint was always playing catch up uh, to the other three companies is because it went a different route than the other three. And it cost Sprint because WiMAX was crappy. I, I had the uh, Galaxy Epic 4G Touch and when WiMAX went live, it wasn't all that good uh, compared to what LTE is. But then you think about it, as they were building out LTE and the network was getting better and better and better and better, soon LTE became the norms. And now that's what we have right now. Um, was 4G LTE the, you know, as good as it is today? No, it wasn't. It, it took time for the companies to build it out. And that's what a lot of us are trying to, to say to the T-Mobile fans who are just coming in with some very hateful remarks, is that we, we don't hate T-Mobile. We, we, don't, we don't want them to fail. You know, we just want people to be informed. I mean, how many consumers do you think that don't really know or not, or not, it's not that they don't really know, but they're just not immersed in the knowledge of mobile technology and what goes on in it, including the tech news that revolves around uh, carrier companies. How many of you guys think that, uh, or how many guys, you know, for, for these consumers, they just see, you know, $900 OnePlus 7 Pro, a OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren Edition, $900, 5G connectivity uh, for like $900 something dollars. And then you have the Galaxy Note 10, 5, uh, Note 10 Plus 5G, which goes for $1,299. You guys see what I'm saying? Like they're going to rush out and buy that phone. And, 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 and they, don't, they don't know that you have to have a direct line of sight currently right now with T-Mobile's with 5G uh, with any of the nodes that they have set up. 
they don't know that. So yeah, they're gonna see that 5G logo come on and come off, come on and come off because when it's when there is an obstruction, it will um, the 5G will drop back down to 4G LTE. So that's the point that I'm making because there's some people who's been commenting on my last video about it and they're like, well, I'm getting decent speeds and they're like, you know, they're getting like 200 megabits per second, 300, four, sometimes five or six, and that's great. Um, you know, the the better your your connectivity is, I, I'm not going to have any ill thing to say about it because I would hope that you would have better connectivity and be and be satisfied with it. But um, the thing is, is that you know, and um, Rishi from uh, that OnePlus guy basically said something that uh, on a comment that actually does kind of make sense. If T-Mobile flipped the switch on and they knew that people were going to have some frustration with the 5G network that would kind of like be like a live interaction to show the courts during their trial that T-Mobile needs to merge with Sprint. Besides the fact that Sprint needs a huge bailout, T-Mobile needs their mid-band. They need their, their band 41. They need their 2.5 gigahertz signal. That's what they need. They definitely need it. You know, to go alongside with their 600 megahertz signal is how they're trying to build out their 5G. Like that's their style. That's their idea of building out 5G. And they need Sprint for that, you know, and Sprint needs T-Mobile to bail them out. Otherwise, they're just going to completely shut down. So uh, for Rishi saying that, you know, that does make a lot of sense. Like, why wouldn't T, you know, why wouldn't T-Mobile flip the switch on and, you know, and, and, and show the government like, OK, you know, this is our 5G, yada, yada, yada. But then there's a there's a flip side to that. And like, would the government even absolutely care? One second. Hmm. Hot chocolate in the morning is great, but would the government even care for for that argument, for that position in it? You know, that's uh, another thing that we gotta think about is like how all this goes. But the main thing is, and the point that I'm trying to make in this video is, we will get to 5G. That's inevitable. There's, it's not, it's not something they're gonna all quit on. Um, Verizon has their method of 5G, which is high band. You know, AT&T has their method. T-Mobile has their method. And Sprint has their method. I'm seeing people saying that right now Sprint is the one with the best 5G connectivity. Who knows? I, I haven't tested it, so I, I can't speak on that. But I can say this, that, you know, in four or five years from now, 5G will become the norms like LTE did um, after going through all the parade of network build-out. And eventually... It, it got better and then it became the norms and that's what we have right now and you know what LTE is still good I don't know why people just you know think like all of a sudden something new comes out they have to have it and that the old thing is obsolete LTE on the device still runs fine um, you can still Netflix you can still YouTube you can still you know use Spotify YouTube music or whatever music player that you like you can still use Periscope you can still use whatever streaming app you want Instagram or whatever it all works fine okay Yes, eventually um, 5G is going to be the, uh, the narrow point, the, the, the point that everyone wants to be on uh, once LTE does become obsolete. But as of right now, LTE is not obsolete at all. It's not something that you should just completely just write off just because 5G is currently being built out. So anyways, guys, um, that's just pretty much what I want to speak on today. Um, yeah, I guess reiterating what i said in the previous video but just kind of going down a little bit you know deeper or whatever and um what do you guys think do you guys think that t-mobile's 5g is going to absolutely like smash all the competition once t-mobile has access to that mid band along with their low band let me know what you guys think in the comment section of the video uh drop a like if you guys enjoyed today's video and um if you would appreciate it if you have not subscribed to subscribe and also hit the bell notification and that's it for now guys i will talk to you on the next one and as always, aloha and melekili kibaka.